espresso yourself and grind away. When you're early in your creative grind, expressing yourself is so important if you want to rise above the noise. This is your time right now if you're listening to play, experiment, and fail as often as you can to find your voice and style. What's going on? You're listening to episode 107 of the Perspective Podcast, and I'm your host, Scotty Russell of Perspective Collective. This show is fuel for your mind and creative grind. Each week, my guests and I provide the tools for thinking bigger, overcoming adversity, and making an impact with your work. At the end of each episode, I share a listener of the week, so stick around to figure out how you can get a shout out on a future episode in the show notes, as well as in the newsletter. I hope you enjoyed last week's punchy episode, as today we continue with our Coffee Caffeinated Kick series. Again, I'm starting each of these episodes with a quote to stimulate your thinking. And today's quote comes from Oscar Wilde. He says, be yourself, everyone is already taken. Let that quote wash over you for a minute. We live in a world where outside marketing forces make millions by seducing and influencing us to buy their products or service. Then we spend hours on end on social media unconsciously consuming other people's perfectly curated feeds and grit. It's easy to feel brainwashed to want these people's lives. I'm totally guilty of it. And this desire causes us to mimic the outside world so we can attempt to fit in and be happy. And I have air quotes going on when I say that. After spending much of my life getting bullied and beat up and tormented, all I ever wanted was to fit in. But I'm realizing at this age, at the age of 30 now, I'd much rather stand out and express myself. So many of us creatives want to show up and be seen. However, we play it safe and tiptoe the edge of what's comfortable and what we think others want to see. And that's why part two of the Coffee Caffeinated Kick series is all about espresso yourself by any beans necessary. Today's episode is going to be a two-part approach in playing the short game while thinking of the long game in the bigger picture. So this is what I mean by the short game. So first, our focus is going to start by helping you find your groove and voice by creating work that expresses yourself. And we do this by breaking away from people pleasing and celebrating our weird. Okay, that's the first things I'll be talking about. And next, we'll go about the long game. And I want to plant a, a bigger picture in your head of how your work should end up targeting one specific person. We'll call this your perfect follower. And then we'll talk about scaling that one specific person you're targeting and scaling that into a thousand true fans to make a living as a creator. If you're struggling with finding your own voice and style and thinking of the bigger picture, then this episode is for you. You can find the show notes to this at perspective-collective.com slash 107 if you'd like to follow along that way and listen. And real quick, if you found value in this episode in this series so far, and you want to be around more people who have this type of mindset in their life and creative grind, you should highly consider joining the Perspective-Collective private Facebook group. We would love to have you be a part of the family and help you elevate your game going into 2019. As always, keep an open mind and sip your coffee slow as you soak up these percolated audio vibrations. Let's go. So first off, let's talk about the short game and let's talk about breaking the people pleasing mentality. So to me, people pleasing is camouflaging your identity and or what you create into what you feel others wish to see. And you do this in order to get their acceptance or to get their praise. And because I was a people pleaser for damn near 25 years of my existence, I now live by this motto of you can't make everyone happy. You are not pizza. And I go way deep into this backstory of, you know, how I used to get bullied and picked on and how this, this spilled over into my life and my artwork. Go back to episode 93 and that one's titled, You Are Not Pizza. That's part one of a series of three life lessons learned from loving pizza. Again, find this at perspective-collective.com slash 93. That'll be a cadence that you'll hear often for other episodes I reference, just so you kind of get what I'm talking about here to reference these things. But essentially what I'm trying to say is, Stop trying to be pizza, all right? Stop trying to get everyone to love you by tailoring your identity, your personality, and your work to get someone else's approval or affirmation. 
Because if you think about it, everybody loves pizza. If you don't, sorry, that's a little bit weird, but I think everyone does because you can tailor it to everybody's specific tastes. Like gluten-free, vegetarian, weird shit on it like sardines, whatever floats your boat. But not everyone needs to love you and your work. And trust me, it's way better if they don't. And here's some more thoughts about breaking away from people pleasing. So there's this concept of creating what others want to see versus what you wish to see. And let me clarify this. So what I'm getting at first in this short game is you're in the early stages of finding your voice, developing your style, figuring out what message you want to put into this world or what you want people to feel when they see your work. And I think the best thing to do when you're in this stage is to create work you wish to see created in the world. Maybe there's something that you see out there or something that you see is missing, and that's your cue to express yourself through this avenue. Instead of creating what you think others want to see, maybe it's a trend that you're trying to ride as well as episode 104, we talked about riding waves. And when you're trying to create work that pleases everyone or that you think other people want to see, you're trying to create for the masses, you make it extremely hard for your work to resonate with someone, one person. And it really only takes one person at a time to build this loyal tribe of people who love you and love your work. And when it's okay to create what others want to see is a couple other scenarios. So when you've gotten to the point where you establish your craft, you have a style, you have your identity and voice, and people are hiring you for your craft, well, then it's okay to create what other people want to see. And hopefully they're creating for you to create in that style that you've built. Okay, you have to please the customer, especially if you want to have longevity and freelance. And later on, when we get to the thousand true fan part and creating for that perfect follower, that's the other type of work where you're creating what others wish to see, but within this um, the Swiss Army knife of ideas and style that you've developed on your own, you're just doing more of what works and more of what you enjoy because you know there's a market for it. And we'll get to that. So I believe that Creating what you wish to see in this world stems a lot from celebrating your weird. And that's the next part I want to talk about in this short game is celebrate your weird. I've noticed a big, big shift in how people show up online and what people like you and me are craving for the people that we follow. And I know this because I've taken countless webinars and courses. I've listened to hours upon hours of audiobooks and podcasts and interviews everywhere you can find online. I've been finding this stuff. And the underlying theme is that people like you and me crave authenticity and knowing there's a human on the other side of the screen. And I say this because so many of us, we see this perfectly curated life that people want to make us believe they're living and they make you think that their life is so perfect. And at the end of the day, there's one thing I have to say, and that's feck perfection. All right. Unscramble that in your mind. People like you and me, I know I'm craving this because I want to know the person behind the killer art, the design, or the photography, okay? People want to know you. They want to know the person behind that account. And in my opinion, what I feel is the best way to prove your humanity is by celebrating your weird and waving your freak flag. And again, I put an episode out on this, episode 81, three super convincing reasons to share your weird and wave your freak flag. This goes way more in depth on this topic. But I want you to ask yourself three quick questions. You know, take time to write some notes down and and get to know yourself a little bit better through this. But one, what are your weird quirks or your qualms? Number two, what are some random fun facts about you? Number three, what are the weird things that you find interesting in life that you keep to yourself because you're ashamed to admit it? And maybe it's something like, You can name all the fun facts or trivia from the hit series, The Office. You know, I'm a big fan of that. I want to encourage you to pour these unique things about you into your work and share some type of story or dialogue to go with it, some type of narrative that fits within it. And own these weird things about you. Wave your freak flag high and proud. So say you love those weird facts about The Office. Maybe you could do something like create a series about your top fun Quotes from the office, maybe snag an animated gift to go along with it, like a gallery slider on Instagram, or, you know, rip a 10 second clip that illustrates your point and put it out there as a series of 10. And you might find out that there's a lot of other people, which I know there are, that love to reference the office. And for some reason, if it doesn't take off or 
you know, it doesn't get the engagement that you think, maybe you're just super early and you haven't been doing things consistent enough to get the eyes and attention on your work to remind people you exist. So keep trying, keep putting yourself out there. Keep pouring these unique things about you into your work and sharing that story. And I believe over time, that's the key point about all of this is over time, I believe two things. You'll attract a like-minded tribe of freaks who vibe to the same ideas, your style, and the weird taste that you have. And the second thing I believe is that you're going to attract the type of people who care about the human behind your relatable work, your personality, and your story. And I want to reframe this to you. You know, Think about this a little bit deeper. What's the worst that can happen versus what's the best that can happen? And next week, we talk more about the excuses that we create for ourselves that hold us back from making things happen in our life. So if you think about it, what's the worst that can happen? Maybe poor engagement. Maybe you're worried about what someone's going to think versus what's the best that can happen. You know, you can attract the right type of people. You could create work that you love that is fun for you, that is enjoyable, that comes easy to you. And there's a huge market for it. When I know there's a huge market of people who are diehard fans of The Office, you can tap into that community and your account can just blow up. I've seen it happen plenty of times versus the worst that can happen. In my eyes, my perspective, the pros far outweigh the cons when it comes to celebrating your weird and waving your freak flag. And looking back on it now, if I'm if I'm being real about me proving my point of me showing myself in my work, my most successful products are all things that express my weird quirks of things like pizza, coffee, cats, and outer space. So when I first got into blogging, I played it way too safe. I was scared to offend people by swearing because I, I swear, I you know, I've really tried to get better at it. But once in a while, it's just coming out in the middle of me talking from my background of sports and coaching. But when I let go and stopped worrying about what people thought of me and I started just like having fun with it, not worried if this one's going to get likes. You know, my biggest thing to date was my space cat illustration that I made at home on International Pizza Day or National Pizza Day. I came home with an idea. I spent a quick 30 minutes drawing this space cat idea out, not expecting anything. And it got great engagement online. It ended up making it a sticker. Then it turned into a print. Then it turned into... Um, a best-selling coffee mug. I sold 200 mugs in under 15 minutes with this design on them uh, through Deneen Pottery. And I would have never expected this, but now I own it. You know, I'm that pizza-loving cat dad who loves coffee in outer space. And I find ways to, you know, kind of overlap all of them. And then you hit multiple audiences of weirdos who like the same shit you do. Like, who would have thought? I would have never thought so now I want to share more of it. I want to celebrate those things that make me weird, the things that make me unique. And I tell a story behind it. I want you to get to know me. So let's transition into the long game now. So we got the short game of breaking the people pleasing, celebrating your weird, waving your freak flag. I think that's like stage one to truly finding your voice and your style and your identity within your work. But let's transition into what I feel is stage two, the bigger picture. And this is where I'm at right now. These are the things I'm thinking of right now at the moment. I really think I've I, I've figured out the stage one part and I'm transitioning to stage two, that bigger picture, and really trying to elevate my business more strategically. So let's get into the long game, talking about your perfect follower and getting to a thousand true fans. So your perfect follower this is so awesome to think about right now. First, figure yourself out, but once you kind of find your groove, then expand it. This is marketing. You know, who's your perfect follower? If you're wanting to elevate your side hobby or hustle into a full time career, you got to pay attention to this section as eventually, once I start figuring this out, I'm going to make it an episode all in itself. So, real talk have you ever thought about who your perfect follower is? Or who your perfect listener is if you have a podcast or your perfect avatar or even your perfect client. You know, that one person you're trying to reach, that Sally or Joe. I'm not talking about your target audience or a segment of people ages 15 to 35. You know, I'm talking about one single person. I'm talking about that one soul who your work or your message resonates with perfectly. Again, this is something I'm hearing more and more about in these courses and webinars and podcasts and audiobooks I'm consuming because I'm really trying to hit things from a more marketing strategic approach. And it really has me thinking a lot about where I'm taking Perspective Collective in 2019 and my strategy for scaling this into a full-time job and 
What kind of content do I want to make sure I'm putting out into the world? What is my exact message? What do I want people to feel when I hit publish? What's that call to action? What's that takeaway when someone sees a post of mine? What do I want people to do when they listen to an episode? And I believe when you celebrate your weird and you share your work that resonates with you consistently over time, you'll start noticing these patterns within your following in your tribe. So pay attention to what people engage with the most. What do people like and comment on the most? And what are they saying? What do they say? How do they say this post made them feel? How do they say this caption, your story made them feel? And when you notice these things, keep doing more of what works to build a stronger no like and trust factor within your audience. Because people buy from people they know, like, and trust. Marketing 101. And the goal is to know who that one perfect person is that your work is for, that your message is for. Who is that that you're creating for on the other side within still creating what's true to yourself that's authentically true. That person who creates what they wish to see in, in the world in the beginning. And that person who celebrates their weird. You know, eventually someone is going to vibe to that and you need to know exactly who that specific person is. What's their name, their age, where do they work, what kind of day job do they have, what's their psychographic, demographic traits to them. This is the stuff I'm talking about. Eventually, once you know that one perfect person, that one perfect follower, which I'm figuring out right now, that's where I believe we can transition to this concept of a thousand true fans, which is from Kevin Kelly, and I'll have it linked up in the show notes. So real quick, a quick overview of this thousand true fans is that to make a good living as a creator... All you need is a thousand true diehard fans that will support anything and everything you put out. And if each one of your fans spent $100 through your product or your service, you would have made $100,000 that year. And I truly believe achieving this level relies on being comfortable with yourself and sharing it in your work, knowing who you're creating for and what's in it for them, staying true to yourself, but always listening to your audience like Stefan Kuhn says back in his episode. And then you continually repeat this cycle over and over again to constantly build that like, know, and trust factor and build these brand ambassadors of that, that support everything that you do. They're going to tell the world about you and your work and your message. And then they're going to also buy and support anything you put out. So these are the things I'm currently working on, on this, this long game phase that I am. And I'm diving deeper and deeper into You know, really taking a hard look at what it is I'm showing up as each day, what I'm putting into this world and how I can scale it, you know, and how I can provide more value to you and provide a better experience for you when you engage or interact with me, my service, my products or my art. And you better believe I'll be putting out an episode on this when I sink my teeth into it more and I have a better understanding of myself and how I'm showing up and moving forward with this bigger picture. So be prepared. I'll have something to share and I'm, I'm, planning on it sooner than later because I'm grinding away on this. So expect something in 2019. So as I wrap this up, espresso yourself and grind away. When you're early in your creative grind, expressing yourself is so important if you want to rise above the noise. This is your time right now if you're listening to play, experiment, and fail as often as you can to find your voice and style. Focus on you and share what makes you unique. You'll find over time that you'll attract the like-minded freaks as well. You know, those are the people you want to be surrounded by. Those are the people you want to cater to. Those are the people you want to provide value for because eventually they could turn into those a thousand true fans. So savagely play the short game and keep the long game in mind if you're wanting to make a living doing your thing. Espresso yourself by any means necessary and keep grinding. family another one in the books go get your second or third or fourth cup of coffee like i am and slay the workload that you have set out for the day or for the rest of the week stay tuned for part three next week on stop brewing a latte excuses and make it happen that may be the most cheesiest pun of all of them but i love it i'm gonna roll with it and there's gonna be a crazy awesome message behind it so please share this with a friend who could use a little pick me up and shoot me a screenshot or a video of you sipping your coffee and vibing out to this episode through instagram stories and let's connect moving on to the listener of the week and this one goes to jimmy the ink and he titled this it has changed me as a graphic designer jimmy states i want to start by saying that the perspective podcast got me into graphic design podcasts Scotty brings a relatable style and philosophy that I can totally relate to and has truly humanized the world of graphic design. 
The interviews with some of the best designers I follow bring me in every time, but it's his outlook on life and graphic design that have me coming back. I've learned so much. I started listening and I love the opportunity that this has given me to build a design community around myself and share that mindset with my coworkers and students. He has taught me how to be confident in my work and weave graphic design into my daily life. Most of all, his podcast allowed me to get past the work and enjoy design in all of its elements. I cannot recommend this podcast enough. Damn, Jimmy, you went all out and took a lot of time to craft that response. I sincerely appreciate you. And if you want to be a listener of the week and get a shout out in a future episode of the podcast, show notes, or newsletter, all you have to do is one, please make sure you subscribe to the podcast. And number two, leave a rating review on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, whatever you want to call it. You got to subscribe and leave a rating review there as now I can also see international reviews. So please share. As I wrap things up, I want to give a huge thanks to my homegirl, Anya Brennan, all the way from Ireland for making this sound so good, as well as my executive assistant, Paige Garland. I could not do this without you two and all the work you do for me. And a huge thanks goes out to Nick Jenkins of Bluka for all the dope theme music you hear on this show. Listen and support him at SoundCloud, Spotify, and Instagram at Bluka. That's B-L-O-O-K-A-H. And as you finish off your week strong, I want to encourage you to keep showing up, keep putting in the work, and keep creating. You got this.